Wedgepath. I'm the operations manager for Summit Mutual Water Company, which um, we're a small water company. So that kind of means um, I have to touch everything from the source through the plant all the way to the meter at the end user's home. The community is pretty much a single, well, a couple roads, um, 54 homes, um, everyone up here is, it's kind of one of those old style neighborhoods where people get together for 4th of July, do parades, that kind of Americana. Um, we're up in the mountains. I think that kind of lends to that sort of neighborly feeling. Um, the, the, the area is sort of a rough terrain, you know, we're in the mountains. So little things like reading meters is sort of a challenge, even on such a, it's a small water company. Being in the mountains, we, I guess it's fortunate, unfortunate. We're not tied to a larger utility like some folks are, um, like San Jose Water. Uh, they actually pump as far as our area, but not where we are. Um, so we are reliant on a, a stream, so surface water. Uh, and that's, we've got to get that through winter and summer, which has its challenges because we put up a dam uh, after the rainy season and we take it down before the rainy season. So, you know, we are very aware of how scarce water is up here. Um, and in the past, they've actually had to truck water. We haven't had to do that since I've been here. But, um, that's happened. <music> We have a fixed amount of water that we're allowed to draw. Um, you know, California state uh, mandates that. So conservation across the plant and, and the neighborhood is, is pretty important. So not a restriction um, as you're seeing in some of the areas like Los Angeles, but yeah, we have restrictions. I think the attitude's great. Uh, they've they've lived through the evolution of this water company over 60 years um so they've you know their stories of the water being so irony and and that your laundry would go in white and it would come out orange um toilet bowls turning orange from iron so like you know they've been very aware of how the how things have progressed but a big portion of that is you know droughts throughout the years um, in fact, at the very top of our neighborhood, there's a set of signs tucked away and, and they would pull them out for different drought conditions so the neighbors knew. Um, and it's, it's, it's nice. It's, I guess, a team effort for lack of a better term. We had aging meters that were, um, I guess, less than accurate uh, is a good way to put it. Uh, we had positive displacement meters, and as they age, the mutating disc can, you know, not flow as freely, um, or there can be sediment that makes it through the screen. Um, so we were looking to upgrade that uh, technology. Uh, the cost to go to an ultrasonic meter with the cellular endpoint um, was close enough that it made sense for us to, you know, to get us to, I guess, um, to current technology. I, I feel like we. Some of these meters we had in the ground are, you know, 40 plus years old. So, you know, we had some old meters and, and with older stuff, it doesn't work as well. So we, we started down that, that rabbit hole. Um, we looked at all of the companies out there that provided it. Um, and we ultimately ended on Badger. You know, if you look at it, at uh, a positive displacement meter, they tend to read the lowest flow, flow rate of, I think, 0.25 GPM. Uh, the ultrasonic reads down to 0 0.05 GPM. So a lot of the parasitic leaks that I call them, the small ones that are kind of uh, common among, among homeowners, toilets, um, hose bibs, those kind of things were leaching just a small amount of water, you know, times the amount of homeowners that had that leak and it adds up to a big number. Um, so our goal was to kind of, you know, to shrink that down, uh, which which we did. Uh, 
Uh, a big portion of it also is leak detection. Um, in the past, uh, leaks were found, you know, when someone noticed the soil was wet in a certain portion of their yard, uh, or we noticed that we weren't hitting you know, zero gallons per minute across the distribution main over a certain period of time. Um, so now when, it, when there's a leak on a main, you know, it, it's all automated. Uh, the, the end user gets an alert, we get an alert. Um, so we're able to find leaks in a day as opposed to a week or, or months, um, which is a big deal for us. Obviously, you know, it's not just the water loss, uh, it's chemical usage, uh, the, disinfect the disinfectants, the coagulants, there's a mechanical wear and tear to pump that water to all the homes, electrical usage, um, that kind of thing, and just the cost of locating the leak. So. Um, that one is, it's, while it's easy to quantify on some level, uh, it's really hard to, to think of all the things it fixes just by having, you know, data that updates every day as opposed to once a month when someone has to hike the street, pull open a Christie box lid, dig through the spiders and the gopher dirt um, to get a meter reading. Uh, so now it's, you know, it's, it's automated and it, and it comes in every day, which is, which is nice. We certainly had a you know um, a bit of volunteer burnout you you have to read the meter at the end of the month you know if you're doing it in the analog style you can't wait so right at the end of the month someone has to go out rain or shine uh, and you know go down some slippery slopes literally um, to find these meter uh, boxes and read them so uh, taking that away was pretty nice you know and I could probably tell a hundred stories of going out looking for leaks. And unfortunately, uh, our soil is clay. Uh, so our, we get a lot of expansion and contraction between dry and rainy seasons. And that's when you tend to have line breaks because rain causes the clay to expand and it stresses any joints that were, uh, were weak. So you'd, you'd be looking for a leak on a rainy night um, and we didn't let them rest. So we'd go out and look for them. Uh, and it, it was, it, it's been, uh, that alone, me being selfish, because I look for a lot of the leaks, you know, that's my biggest quantifier is I don't have to do that ever again, uh, which is humongous. <music> Analytics and data has been kind of lacking. We basically, at the end of the month, do a manual read and we would just have one lump sum of data every month. Uh, so to be able to kind of see the more real-time data we can kind of see what's going on if you notice a user all of a sudden go 20 spots up in a week to your top user of water uh, maybe something's going on there and it's worth reaching out to the homeowner i mean like like i mentioned earlier we're pretty we're pretty small but we're focused on efficiency uh cost savings quality of water all these things but a big portion of that is just making it so the next board that steps in uh, doesn't have to figure out how to run everything. You know, the, the user interface with Beacon um, and, and Ion Water and Badger um, is really good. We've got some um, neighbors who are not super tech savvy and, and they all tend to love the app and being able to see uh, the water usage. Getting folks to the app, some of them were reticent to go there because they thought they were going to have an additional charge to have an app. And, you know, we tell them it's free and, uh, and finally they sign up. The, the interesting thing is we've, out of everyone that has a meter installed today, we have a very small portion of the finish. Uh, we've got 94% of them using the Ion Water app, which is pretty high. Um, and the stories that come back are funny because people say, oh, the meters are inaccurate. It says I have a leak. Uh, and said, all right, just do me a favor. Tonight, shut off the water to your toilet. So let's, let's kind of start troubleshooting and, and looking for things. And then the next morning, the leak goes away. And, and you know, they call back and say, oh, I'm so sorry. It was a leak, you know, uh, because people don't think they have leaks. You know, they, they think everything's operating properly. Um, and we found so many leaks across the neighborhood. On one hand, it's amazing. On the other hand, it's sort of scary. The amount of water that was just going down the drain.
templates sort of for Badger that tells people how to sign up. We put a little wrapper on that and just, you know, communicated via email and text, depending on the, the user, um, letting them know how to use it, why they should use it. And luckily we've got a, you know, pretty cool neighborhood and, and they, well, 94% of them signed up and are, are using the app. I think people are more conscious of what's going on because again they don't have to wait to the end of the month to find out how much water they use you know they we have four tiers of water usage and and it obviously uh, is a benefit to stay in the lower tiers um, and before they wouldn't know where they stood unless they went out to the street pulled the meter lid um, again played with the spiders and and looked at the meter to see uh, how much they'd use but it, no one was doing that because it was it was painful um, now you can pull out your phone, look at the app and say, okay, I've used X cubic feet of water and they know where they stand. So um, uh, that, that alone is huge. You know, just being able to know if you, how much water you're using. My favorite feature is the leak detection because um, everyone that's gotten the leak alert was surprised that they had a leak. You know, you just don't, you don't see where the water's going. You know, it can be underground on the line. In fact, we just had one yesterday. Um, and there's no way to know that that leaks there until the end of the month when you get the bill tradition. So to be able to find out in one day is, is just massive. You know, our goal as a water company obviously is to provide quality water. Um, we'd like to do that while working on water conservation, uh, process automation, cost savings and efficiency across the entire system. So this fits into that because it checks a lot of those boxes, water conservation, obviously, um, lets people know how much you're using and, and pretty close to real time. Uh, it finds leaks for us, automates meter reading and leak detection. Um, all of these equal cost savings and efficiency. So um, it just kind of fit into where we were already going. Uh, it was just the last leg uh, from an upgrade perspective that we needed to do. We have this state-of-the-art water plant. Um, we probably have more autom uh, automation and sensors and automated valves and remote access than water companies 10 times our size. But we had these meters that were sort of antiquated and need to be read manually. So this was the last leg that took us to, I guess, our total goal. Most of these guys know in, in the mountains, it's pretty remote. So uh, reading meters, you know, can be a, for a small amount of homes, can be a five mile route, you know, so the person's having to drive the car, you know, get out, lift the lid, look at the meter. I mean, just the, the amount of waste that goes into that uh, from time, uh, money, fuel, uh, it, just the meter reading piece alone is such a benefit. Um, the leak detection, I mean, it, Every piece of it standalone is enough of a reason to upgrade, but you put them all together um, and it's sort of a no-brainer. Mm -hmm.